Hey everybody, welcome to the Trisendence Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Ovas. And with me is the boy who loves to play Pokemon because his cap is always facing back, Sorosh. Gotta catch him all, baby. Hell yeah. Cloudy and one. Sorosh. <laughs> yes. T- someone is finally back. In our yes. lives, we've yes. been waiting two whole weeks. The project, the prodigal son returns, dude. And you know what else do we call him, right? Legacy. No, you the biggest him? Xbox fan. Oh my god, <laughs> Eric, welcome back. The man. legacy factor is back, ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah! <laughs> Sorry baby. to keep you waiting. <laughs> How's it going, Eric? It's going good. How are you? Good. Like, you were gone, man. It felt I was weird. Lost, we cold never and talked scared. about any games. No, we didn't talk about any oh, games. No. Like I think the most we talked about was Pokemon Go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, about losing uh, the fad. But don't worry, I'm back. I got the whole game thing covered. This uh, episode, there's a lot to talk about, so you know, tune in and you guys will get to hear all about it. It's good to have you back, man. Yeah, man. We, we missed good. that. We it's missed been that exciting week. It's, it's been too it's much. Been an exciting man. week. I'll tell you that. <laughs> See, <laughs> we're basically like the Triforce. But the thing is, our gaming part of the Triforce was gone, so we were just like one straight line of just... The duo, the... Uh, of two like lines. Movie. Just parallel lines, just not connecting. Damn, that's deep. It's romantic. It's so <laughs> sad, man. Put on a Hallmark card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, Sorosh. Yes. Right now is a very special moment, because right now, Eric is going to talk about someone... He's going to go off about his favorite game. <laughs> oh He's been waiting. God. That pent up, pent up rage and aggression. It's just, just boiling up inside. It's too much, man. Let it Your loose. favorite game, man. Titanfall? Let it loose. What happened? Bro, so let it loose. Happened? Anyone who's following anything that has to do with games right now, the Titanfall multiplayer tech test took place last weekend and it's taking place this weekend. So anyone who knows anything about me, you guys know that I am the biggest advocate for Titanfall. I can argue with anyone over Titanfall 1 and how such an interesting, great concept the game was. And I, I could write like an essay on t- how amazing Titanfall yeah, 1 he's, was. He's not lying. He's not lying. He's he's like, uh, you know, when, it he first, was... when it first came out, you got the whole mobility factor, the quickness of it, of Titanfall 1 while running. You had the AI, which some people hated, but you could use it to your advantage in Titanfall 1. You had just the dynamic battlefield going from you're shooting at a, a pilot, all of a sudden that you're in a mech battle. All of a sudden you're in a mech versus pilot battle. All of a sudden you're running through a building, a, a mech's chasing you down. Yep. Like When Titanfall 1 came out, I loved it. I have almost 200 hours in it. So Damn. Titanfall 2 comes out and I am hyped. I go, I download the technical test, and they clearly say, guys, like, don't worry, this isn't a beta. This is an old build from months ago. We are just testing the servers. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Before you begin reviewing Titanfall 2 technical test, I wanted to talk about how Eric went to work and he came back during his (laughs) break. And mind you, he works overnight, so he came back in the middle of the night. (laughs) To play this because he was leaving the next day <laughs> for his cottage trip. Oh, I've d- I, I is the he I loves came, it that much. I, when I came much back time. from my overnight, I didn't sleep to try out the the multiplayer uh, technical test. Yeah, but, but it wasn't up when I came back, so it was. I had to when I came back from the sh- my shift was done. I didn't go to sleep to try at least a few a few games, and I was so let down Damn. with the direction that Respawn took with Titanfall 2. Their changes make absolutely no sense because yeah. with Titanfall 1, mm-hmm. no one complained about the core gameplay mechanics of Titanfall 1. Yeah. The number one complaint was lack of content and no single player. You, yeah, they, they figured that there wasn't a lot to unlock in the game. They couldn't justify paying 69 or 59.99 for a game with no campaign. Yep. That's where a lot of the things were coming from. And since it was an Xbox exclusive, yep. a lot of scrutiny came from the pl- like the people who couldn't play it. So they were Ooh, trying to poke it, yeah. holes in where there weren't. They go, oh, I don't like the AI. I don't like this. So 
come Titanfall 2, I, I don't know. They It's been in development since, for a few years now. It's been, like, I think Titanfall came out in 2013 uh, or 2014. Yeah. Ever since the first one came out, it's uh, after a few months, I think they started developing on the second yeah. one. Yeah, so it's been about um, two years or so. Two, yeah, maybe. it's been a while. And yeah. I couldn't believe it. The first change that makes no sense in yeah. Titanfall is they took the countdown timer from your Titan. So originally you have three minutes. Every yeah. three minutes you get your Titan. Yeah. They changed it to a kill streak. Pretty yeah, much. that is. It's like it's not Call of Duty. It's, it's like, like why like, you gotta make the it number Call one of Duty? thing they tried to avoid with Titanfall One was they didn't want to be Call of Duty with mechs. That was the number yeah, one thing that they kind of went with, and. Sure, a lot of people. Oh, this game is just Call of Duty with mechs, which I could, as I said, I could easily destroy that concept. But yeah. come Titanfall two, I can't defend it. Yeah, when they, people just pitch like that it idea, yeah. it's just like it now. And it's like what they did was before it, it didn't matter if you're amazing at the game. It didn't matter if you were subpar. It didn't matter any of that stuff. It was it was a casual game. It was easy to get into, and no matter what, you knew you had a mech coming your way. In yeah. three minutes, you will have your mech. If you kill people, the countdown timer goes down. Yeah. Within one match, you can get easily four or five mechs. Easily. Easily. Yeah. yeah. With Titanfall 2, you have a 0% timer that starts off. It's not a timer. It's a it's a scoreboard. 0%. Yeah. Now, they patched it recently that every five seconds, it goes up by 1%. By playing objectives in the game and by killing people and killing AI, the percentage goes up to 100%. And okay. then you call down your Titan. The thing is... It takes so freaking long to even get your Titan, and when <laughs> a it kill streak or something, when you drop it, you it's you're already halfway done the game, and you're just like shit. And then, which leads to the second big problem is the changes they made to the Titans themselves. Your Titans get destroyed in maybe five minutes. You will be lucky to have your Titan for a, a, for more than five yeah. minutes in the match. Or game or something. Yeah, you can't have it. It's. They they took out the recharging shield. They replaced it with a ba- um, battery core. So you ha- your Jeez. shield doesn't come back. If you want your shield to come back, you have to steal an enemy titan's uh, core. Yeah. And you have to bring it back to your to your titan or your friend's titan, and it'll build up your kill streak, and then uh, it'll get your back. It'll get your health back. Okay. The problem with that is. Your Titan gets wrecked so fast and there's no way to like kind of sit back and let your shield recharge because you have no shield. Yeah. Which brings... Another change that makes no sense is the rodeo system. So in Titanfall 1, that? Mm-hmm. when you <clears throat> jumped onto a Titan, yeah. the, 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 the system was so... like There was something wrong with the system. You had your recharging shield and then you had your Titan's health. When you rodeo the Titans in Titanfall 1, you shoot at the core and it bypasses the shield and it goes right to the Titan's health. So okay. in this, and you could ride on the back of the Titan, you keep shooting, you could jump off. You'll have your one-on-one fights with the guy because usually he'll jump out of his Titan and try to knock you off of the Titan. In Titanfall 2, when you rodeo onto the guy's Titan, you rip out his battery core and then you jump off. That's it. Oh. You don't ride the Titan anymore. You can't, And then the next time you jump on the back of the guy's Titan, you throw a grenade down the hatch and then you jump off. There's no rodeoing of the titans anymore yeah you Which, can't take the other person's and that was anymore. like a pretty cool feature yeah it was so epic writing on the walls you jump off the walls you jump onto that guy's titan you start shooting his core you jump off that titan onto someone else's titan start shooting at the core and then you generally you just you do like a crazy maneuver and get away now yeah. it's like jump on toss shoot jump off yay just like call of duty well, we probably don't jump on mechs but <laughs> well they slowed anything, down the anything. gameplay yeah yeah well. so uh, i talked to like a lot of my coworkers and, and friends and anybody who was a fan of Titanfall, right? Everybody complained that you know what I like the the original game. Why is it so slow now? Yeah, they, it feels like I'm uh, like, like it feels weird. Like well, I'm a it just feels weird. Yeah, according to them, they wanted to say, oh, we wanted to make player maneuver more predictable. When t- with Titanfall 2 because Titanfall 1 you're so fast you're running off walls sometimes it's hard to shoot the guy yeah that's what made Titanfall Titanfall when you slow down the when you slow down how fast your guy is running it just feels like a, another f- regular first person shooter that we've yeah, played shooter, so, yeah. so many so many times and it's it's these like these changes from a game that I absolutely Love, adored yeah. it's it's heartbreaking they, they took out their most popular game mode, which was attrition. Wait, but but, um, but then the first game, 
I mean, the game hasn't come out yet, though. Oh, no. They confirmed attrition is oh, not coming confirmed? for the final. Oh, they replaced God. attrition with Bounty Hunt, which what is, that? is the lamest game mode ever. It's nothing. Like, they said it's a spiritual successor to Titan, to attrition. Okay. In no way, shape, or form is Bounty Hunt. So, whoa, 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 whoa. how do you do in that game mode, then? So... Uh, so for those of you who haven't played Titanfall 1 Attrition which was in Titanfall 1 the way the game yeah. mode works is um, you have a point system to get up to I think it was I can't remember the score so Grunts gave you one point Killing Pilots gave you three points yeah. Killing Titans gave you five points Yeah. and so both teams would have Grunts these AIs just running around that you can shoot Yeah. Um, you can camouflage with them if you want you could wait for them to go into buildings and see if they get shot to see if someone's hiding in there yeah. and it was just a big chaotic war zone yeah it. bounty hunt it's five on five so it's down one player from oh. what attrition once was okay. there's no ai at all the oh, only ai so that spawns like empty map? the only ai that spawns is in certain parts of the map so you have drop zones where like a pod will drop and ai will start coming out of there but they're not allied to either side what and the point of bounty hunt is okay. to sh- kill the bots you get money, so you get ten, one box worth ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, and then you have to you you have to run back with the bonus that you have to um, deposit it into your bank to, into your bank. Which I have no. This isn't Battlefield is Hardline. Like, hey, hey. Is this like uh, the Halo thing? No, it's not like Halo, Warzone. Warzone. Okay. No, it, it's literally you have two teams fighting over to kill AI that spawn ra- okay. randomly. And then you go cash in your 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 check, and if you kill an enemy pilot, you'll half of the you'll take half of their earnings, and you'll take it for yourself. And then they have I think forty five seconds. You go and you could deposit money, mm-hmm. and then you have like these special titans that kind of come during the match. And if you kill them, you get a bigger bonus, which is so irritating because when they take like the last hit factor from like MOBAs where the oh. Titan's about to die and you took off like 90% of the Titan's health yeah. also one and guy just comes and other guy just hits it with a laser and he gets Jesus so I don't know if Respawn ever listens to this Bounty Hunt is not attrition and it, just for the love of God bring back the attrition <laughs> just listen and listen to the biggest Xbox I don't man. like there's there's changes that are awesome your Titans have specials which are sick one of their yeah. specials uh, Eon or Ion, he has like the um, Iron Man chest beam yeah. for his ultimate, where he just Ooh. fires a gigantic Ooh. laser across the map, That's which looks cool. so sick. And each of the Titans now have like their own class, which is really cool. Like you have Scorch, which is like a fire class. You have Ronin, which is like I, which he isn't in the the, t- the tech test, but we've seen a little bit of Ronin. Where he's like a yeah. ninja Titan with like a sword and stuff. What so the? if they took these cool. And the grappling hook. The grappling hook just seems like why the heck wasn't this in yeah, Titanfall yeah. One? Everybody was just saying that uh, the grappling hook and like this one feels really, I guess, flimsy. No, I feel like the like gra- it's I've- like slow or it's like loose. It's not as like fast paced or anything. Like well, you, I, don't know. I felt like the like grappling hook of- was like, I, I, like such a crazy idea that you after playing Titanfall Two, you're like, why didn't you think about this for Titanfall One? Like, I love the grappling hook. What I don't like about the grappling hook is it's, it's tied. No, it's tied to a um, a skill button. So either you have a grappling hook, you have a sonar pulse knife, which will give off which a- people are in the area. Oh, you, so you have to choose it. Holographic then. holograms or cloaking. Oh, so you have to choose it then. Yeah. So you have to oh choose it. So if I choose God. grappling hook, it should be like like it should be every on every class. Yeah, yeah, like it. So every class. if I choose grappling like hook, thing. I can't choose cloak. And since I can't choose cloak, when people drop titans, I am generically screwed because I can't hide from them in the sense of like, Titanfall one. You equip cloak, you go invisible. Titans can't see you. For this one, I have to choose: Do I want to stay invisible from titans, which will annihilate me, or do I want to have a grappling hook? And it's just like I don't understand why. Yeah. How are the, how are the, the maps? The maps itself, though, like, are they good? We've we've played three maps, uh, Boomtown. I can't remember the other two names. I just remember Boomtown. Yeah. And they aren't like they're okay. The thing with it, they're big open fields in Titanfall Two for some reason, which yeah. they give a disadvantage to the pilots. Yeah, but why a, though? I mean, it's 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 like, how is how are you supposed to destroy? A titan who's on a field 
He's going to see you coming from a mile away and yeah. he's going to like, okay, fine, I'll just shoot this and guy. And it's hard to grab like walls to run off of. And then you have... And what's the point of the grappling hook? That th- it's, thing, it's like they made the map field and stuff. with like the idea that everyone's going to have a grappling hook to be grappling around the map. Like that's why I, yeah. I feel like they made it such an open thing. And it's like Angel City was such a nice map in Titanfall 1. Like yeah. it was such the you're in a big city, you have everywhere to run, you could hide. And so far from the maps we've seen in Titanfall 2, it's... It has. It wasn't anything that struck out, but um, yeah. apparently they're aware of all the, how um, upset their hardcore fan base is. Yeah. Um, apparently they make some changes. So fingers crossed. I really want the game to turn out being good because as I love Titanfall One, uh, they said that all future DLC for the game will be free. Yeah. So that's one thing that looks. But the way the game is, I really feel like it's a game that has taken two steps forward and like seven steps backwards like, okay so it's even further back than <laughs> damn like, i was talking to my uh i was talking to my co-worker he he plays a lot of games as well and he uh he loved Titanfall one and he was saying the way to fix this game is if they just delay it yeah, and just take was, like a year and completely hash everything out, and then just give us something that will be entertaining to play. Because right now, they're losing their existing fans as well. Like, uh, I'm not gonna get it, and all of the friends I played, we're not gonna get it if it's la- like this. Because we're fans of the first one. The question is, are you gonna pick it up, Eric? I, I, I'm gonna wait to see what changes are being made. And we'll take a look. So I have it pre-ordered for like I think thirty nine 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 or four nine nine nine. So it's yeah. cheaper. It's on the cheaper side of things. And then you're gonna s- but sell it if to they, EB games for four cents or something. No, <laughs> if, but if I, I I'm following the game closely, so hopefully we'll see that some of these changes being made. I yeah. feel bad for the PS4 users that this is their first Titanfall experience. I mean. I guess they have nothing to base it off because they never played the first one. So a lot of them were like, oh, this game's so fantastic. This game's so good. Like a lot of them are seeming to be really liking it. Man, that's bad. But your pit, like your initial user base is just like, bro, like what are you guys yeah, doing? Bad. So I will wait to see. Fingers crossed. I really hope. When is the release date? The release date is terrible. <laughs> okay. Terrible. One week after Battlefield One. Oh and then, no. And then so it goes Battlefield. Okay, it goes Gears. Yeah. Either a week or two Battlefield One. Yeah. And then a week after that Titanfall Two. Wow. And then a, a week or two after that, I think it might be even be a week after that Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Jesus. Ooh, they, it they're is releasing still making Call of Duty. Are oh, you yeah. serious? Call of Duty. They're releasing Titanfall in like multiplayer juggernaut month. Jesus. Like going up against. Call of Duty, Battlefield, and for the Xbox people, Gears of War Four. Jesus, and yeah, I'm all about Gears of War Four, man. So. Yeah, it's it's they it's like they're sending the poor game out to die. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's what they're doing. I hope the the uh, delay it, man. I, I hope the I, I would have no problem with the delay. Yeah, yeah, like all. everybody has been saying that. You know what? If they delay it and fix this game, uh, I'm okay with that. It's perfect. And it's yeah. releasing in a crowded month. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, you're going to keep talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> so pissed up. I know. Oh, man. You guys, yeah. if, the people, if these guys only knew how much I hype Titanfall and how much I love I know, Titanfall, man. One, <laughs> then they would get an idea. For those, but, of, for those of those that don't know, like we, like, we have our own, like, Xbox crew. And we always used to hate on Eric for liking this game so much. Because we never saw what was so special about this game. Like sure, we saw like the wall jumps and the tight ends and stuff, and we're like, okay, you know, it's it's cool, it's alright, but I don't I don't think I want to play this game, like religiously. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Eric was number one fanboy. He would he would defend this game like yeah. it was his honor or something. Like you were making mm. fun of his honor. So for him to saying all this stuff for Titanfall two, it means they definitely goofed. Yeah. They definitely goofed. They definitely time. did, man. So, yeah, hopefully so they okay. listen to you and they do these changes, man. Only time will tell, man. Yeah, Only time will tell. But speaking of other games, Eric. Oh, it's this What week. did you do on Thursday? I went to X16. So <laughs> What is a, that? It's uh it seems like a little gaming. I don't know if it qualifies as a convention. It seems like X, uh Microsoft uh hooked up a bunch of Xboxes in um Toronto. Yeah. Uh, in the distillery district and they had a bunch of booths to try out a bunch of different games and you get some cool prizes. You got like um 
Gears of War Keychain, Forza, okay. Horizon 3, cool, cool. Um, cool. Car Freshener, uh, air, air Freshener. <laughs> car Freshener. You get a record poster and yeah. um, an Xbox One water bottle. So there. All the stuff you need, man. Yeah, yeah, all the stuff you need get to air game, freshener, bro, that the air water fresh- bottle. Oh, they hooked you up, right? trying to say it with air freshener. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, do gamers <laughs> oh. <laughs> smell or something? What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> which uh which, which games did you try oh i so i tried everything everything Jesus. And, I knew it. and it was funny because when I, I got interviewed by um one of the microsoft reps there to just to talk <laughs> what i like about xbox and you should have gave us a shout out that's it wait whenever they post it, you guys will see it. no way <laughs> and microsoft, the guys things. like what games you got you have pre-ordered and i was like bro i literally i have almost every single game here pre-order Holy like, and the guy's like what i was like yeah like everything so what i got to try out i got to try out gears of war 4 yeah I got good phenomenal no Ooh. way if the thing they with gears of war 4 That's what i what really I like hear, about baby. it is they went back to the gears of war roots it feels like a beefed up version of gears of war 3 which yeah. is great i mean for some people it's like oh i don't even say for some people for people who are like for the opposite side of the fence. Yep. Yeah. They're like, oh, it's just Gears of War. They're not innovating enough. They need new gameplay. They need to do this. And they tried that with Juggernaut, uh, not Juggernaut, with Judgment. Judgment Day, yeah. And the game was a flop. Was Judgment horrible. was terrible. Yeah. yeah, it was horrible. So I was so scared to see what was going to happen with Gears of War 4. I played the multiplayer beta. I thought it was great. Great. But the single player, the mission that I got to try out. Yo, hold on. First of all, I don't want anything spoiled for me. Yo, I'll be, I'll be, um, I brief. Just, <laughs> I'll just say, you can say brief stuff, but I don't want anything spoiled. It's me. just like for the mission, you're in the, you're, in, it's nighttime, you're in the dark, um, yeah, going through a forest, and you just get into a dam. That's all I'll say. Okay. You have a guest, you have a guest character with you. I'm yeah. not gonna say who he is, but okay. it made me giggle like it's a little a he, girl. Eh? It's giggle a he, like eh? a girl. Girl. So well, that's cool. When I got to try Gears of War four, one of the things they liked typing was the weather system. They're like, Ooh. oh, Sarah is now um, a messed up planet. The weather's gone all over the place. That's We've sick. incorporated that stuff into the game. That's so, cool. So the demo that I got to try, one of the things was, one of the things you encounter is these heavy winds that are kind of just blowing everything away. Oh, yeah. It's the same one we, uh, there's a trailer, right? There was a trailer, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So trailer. one thing that was kind of cool that was you could shoot away cover and then sometimes it'll, the wind will go and it'll take the grunt <laughs> or <laughs> with it. Wow. But one thing I did was I threw a frag grenade and stupid me didn't take into incorporate the wind was blowing against me. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> so I threw it and it came back. <laughs> no and I wasn't way. expecting that because Gears of War doesn't really that's have that kind of good. stuff going on, right? Yeah, that's pretty sick. So the amount of detail that you saw in the chaos that the weather was bringing, you were just kind of like, you kind of have to just sit back and like admire like the beauty that was happening. Yeah. And the gameplay is so, like it's, it's so... It's true to the Gears franchise, mm-hmm. and it's just so like it's just nice refinements. If you're going in thinking it's going to be a completely different, like they changed a bunch of stuff, no, they really when they say they took Gears back to their roots, nice. They took Gears back to their roots, which is what everyone wants. That's cool. Uh, we gotta try the, some of the new weapons, the bu- uh the bus saw, which mm-hmm. is kind of interesting, which mm-hmm. uh, it just shoots out these little blades that cut everyone uh, cut everyone in half. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotta see some of the new enemies, which were uh, interesting because some of your cover. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, the yeah, the yeah. cover uh, sometimes will, um, where you're hiding behind, you could pop it, and then like these creatures will spawn out of the cover. Mm-hmm. And then light, there was like these lightning storm that happened near the end of the demo, and everyone yeah. was watching me play. And I felt like such a noob at that point because I died like three or four times because <laughs> lightning kept hitting me. <laughs> but I said, for the people who are looking for Gears of War, you guys are in for a treat. I mean, nice. dude, I'm really excited about the game. I'm, so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad excited. that you liked it that much because it just, I just can't wait to play it now. Yeah, yeah I'm fun. saying yeah, so it's, it's true to the original trilogy, and yeah. and what, what really, what I was all about for Gears of War was the whole campaign thing. If you know me, I'm a huge yeah. campaign guy. Yeah, you like. And Gears story. of War had like one of the best campaigns. It You're was so one, epic. two, three. So like yeah, I'm just excited about playing this game. New oh, heroes, maybe. new new enemies, new area. It's it's not the locust normal, right? It's a new. No, it's uh, I can't remember their name, but it's not the yeah, locust. But they look very similar. Yeah, the kind of like slimy looking things. Yeah, you see, like mm-hmm. they have different classes and stuff. But um. Yeah. What about the next game you tried? 
Right. So the next you game. You tried Gears and then what do you try next? I tried Gears of War and then right from Gears I went to try Dead Rising 4. Ooh. Which, um, once again, I felt like with Dead Rising 4, it's more or less the same as the old Dead Rising. So you kind of okay, know so what you're getting. It's, it's good though because it's, it's, it's very it's a, hip, yeah, entertaining. It's one of like those the, things like where it's like before. if it's not broken, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Exactly. Yeah. Titanfall. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> like um, yeah, it's, it takes place in Colorado. You're playing as Frank again. Nice. One like thing that. that makes me really excited is four players call oh, in a real perfect, game. That's because because uh, 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 I played the first one and mm-hmm. I played. The second one. I haven't played the third one that much. I think I played it halfway and I was like, okay, this is not as as fun. But the first and the second one, I've played always co-op because it's so fun. It's so fun, man. There's a bunch of zombies and you just make whatever you can and then you just like go and you just completely destroy zombies. It's so fun. It's just like, it's just stupid fun. Like, you know, like I got yeah. Alex to try it out. She liked it. And the four player co op aspect is exciting, but another thing they added to the game, which you got to try in like the 10 minute demo, was an exosuit. What? So, with the exosuit, like you become some cre- like superhero like guy. Superhuman or something? Yeah, you could rip zombies in half. You could pull things out of the ground. Like, I pulled a parking meter out and I started whooping uh, zombies with a parking that meter. That is cool. I had a gigantic cool. Gatling gun. And one thing I always kind of liked about the Dead Rising uh, franchise is they know what they are. They know they're just a game that's like the stupid, fun kind of game. Yeah. So they don't try to keep it too realistic. So one of the things I had was a lightning axe. Like an axe or lightning hammer. It was an axe. <laughs> so um, An axe and a hammer. They're pretty... Well, because uh, well, the reason I was getting that confused is when you're beating people up in it with it, you get like an ultimate, and so the ultimate is reminiscent of Thor because you hold up the axe oh. and lightning just starts sparking around and Jesus. just hitting everything, blowing up all like blowing up a bunch of zombies. <laughs> Made it even more ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the good, thing. That's like, good, ridiculous that's good. is good. Yeah. So, I said four players co-op. I think it's going to be good. I mean, if you're a fr- if you're a fan of the Dead Rising franchise, oh, yeah. you right know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, I think. I think if I'll buy. you're just picking up t- uh, Dead Rising, I think you I think you like the new one. I think yeah. one of those games that'll be a lot more funner when you're playing with friends. I mean, this is the first time they're d- introducing four player co op. Yeah, right? three was two players co op. Yeah, which was pretty fun, and you got like oh, vehicles you could drive around two, and stuff. Like- yeah, Except the first one. Were two. First one was one player. Yeah, Ooh. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First one was one player because re- two came out with two parts. Like one was uh, with a new Chad, guy, Chuck, and then yeah, the other yeah, one Chuck. was off the record. Yeah, the with, two off the record, which is which is Frank again. So yeah, okay. Mm. And so it was yeah, pretty that's fun. That's good, man. Yeah, I remember playing the second one, Dead Rising Two, and I was really in love with that one. That was pretty fun to play at that time. But I haven't played three yet, so. Damn. But yeah, I guess I'm going to skip three and go on to four and play with like four player co-op because that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. That's Having four really players dumb. to play with you guys, that would be pretty cool. Oh, uh, 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 what about the other games? Oh, man, there's so, there's so many games. Just, uh, uh, let's like the, just let's name see. the ones which are like really, really exciting. Like the oh, top three oh, that, that you made you go like, or... you know what? Yeah, I'm I'm on board. I'm up uh, for this. Just the top. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover some of the uh, some of the there, there's two more Xbox exclusives I want to kind of cover, and there were some indie games that were oh, kind yeah. of stood out from the okay. crowd. Um, the next one I got to try out was Forza Horizon Three. Yeah. Which, as Forza Horizon Two, I will go on record to say like that game was probably one of the best like racers <laughs> in like the last decade for Forza Horizon Two. Was well, like, every I, game the best game ever? <laughs> not you, it's even you, even if you Xbox. read reviews and you critical like Forza Horizon is different than the main Forza series, which yeah. is like if you go from Forza, I picked Forza uh, Forza Motorsport Six up. I thought it was okay. It wasn't the biggest fan. It's more yeah. of a sim racer, but Forza Horizon Two, which I thought was a really great racer, which is better. I thought I took I liked it better than Forza Six. Yeah, I was excited to play Forza Horizon Three. So Forza Horizon Three, we now take it to Australia. Jeez. So now you get to drive oh, all. Hey, mate. Hey. I don't know. I just want. To, I just want to say. Oh, I mate. <laughs> hey, mate. Blind. So, so kangaroo. Is it blimey? That's a British. <laughs> That's thing. British. Shit. Kangaroos. <laughs> and koalas. Okay. <laughs> okay, what's up? So with Forza Horizon Three, um, is that it takes place in Australia? Yeah. Uh, the game looks beautiful. 
Of course. The greenery every looks... Forza does, the gre- every the Forza does. The greenery... Lo- you, the thing is, you go from driving on the street to driving through a forest, which looks astounding. Really driving on the side of a beach. So you got, like, the waves shooting up while you're driving, like, your Lamborghini That's on the cool, beach. Yeah. And then after that, you transfer over to, like, one of these, like, off-road cars. And you're yeah. you're racing someone who's attached to a helicopter. So what it's one hell? of those Forza events. And, I mean... It feels like they are taking what made Forza Horizon 2 great and they're building on it with Forza Horizon 3. I mean, they got over, I think, 365 cars in the game, which is a pretty big Damn, step up. Each car for each day. <laughs> I know, right? Unless it's a leap year, then you know, you're screwed because <laughs> you don't have that one car <laughs> for one, one day. Car, yeah. They implemented four players co op in it as well. Wait, for, hold on. Co op or what? Cause, is it like a story yeah, mode? Yeah, so the Horizon games have you story can, modes. And you the, can roam around yeah, in an open world? Yeah, it's free Ooh. roam. So what? kind of think of like, um, I don't know, if maybe old Need for Speeds. I'm a, th- you have a big open world. So in Horizon 2, you're in Europe, um, France, uh, and two other places. I can't remember. In Horizon 3, you have all of Australia to drive around. Yes. So what you do you have, mean by all of Australia? Like the whole country? Yeah. Uh, oh. From my understanding. I'm not sure if you got like just certain parts of Australia, but from my... so You mean a city? Not a whole country. No, I'm not. On, no. The, the, thing, the last one you had, like, three uh, three places you drove through. Uh, France and two other ones, I can't remember. So, it's big. It's huge. Yeah, and they said like this one... bigger than Grand Theft Auto. This one they said is bigger than um, Forza Horizon 2. So, we'll get... We'll see how that goes. But I'm not going to lie, but every time I've played a Forza game, I've always played it at someone's house. I've never <laughs> owned or played. Played a yeah, game. You probably played the oh, mo- yeah. the, the initial motorsport series, yeah, which probably. is just like the sim. I've racers. never played Horizons. So, and you have all these the um, events marked off on a gigantic map. Yeah. And now, so in the old Forza games, you just had single player you're driving by yourself. In Forza F- Horizon Three, you and four of your buddies could drive around the whole entire map, and you guys could do all the story events with each other, which sound which which to me sounds great yeah and they have their car clubs back so you can make your car club you could drive i think it was like um 16 or 20 20 24 racers you could race with online and it just have like this seamless integration of multiplayer to single player and now they have it on pc so the pc community could get in and play as well so if you no bought way. if you bought it on cool. you bought an xbox one you have the P- windows 10 version of it automatically and you can invite your friends who are playing on PC to join your game, and yes, it's gonna look fantastic on PC. On, I saw on, you guys have a I PC. saw on 4K. Only me. They I had know. a 4K version with HDR running at the oh. place because they had it on the PC version, and I couldn't believe it. it made the Xbox One version look like Xbox 360. No way! I was like, oh wow, I shed God. it. 4K HDR Forza That's Horizon sick. 3, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Okay, we're gonna keep talking about this. I want you to move on because we're gonna run out of time. Soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then, so the next one I got to try out was uh, Recor, which is from the uh, Kenji and Fune, which is the creator of Mega Man. Yeah. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And game. the Metroid Prime team. So oh, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen the gameplay for it. It looks good. It looks pretty interesting. What when people say the gameplay is a spiritual, it plays like Mega Man and Metroid Prime, they aren't wrong. When I picked up the game for the first time. It's a it's a budget. I think it's retailing for thirty nine or forty nine ninety nine. So it's kind of a budget title coming out. Yeah. I didn't know much about it before I started playing it, so I was a mm-hmm. little bit on the fence. But after playing Recore, I think it's going to be a hit. It's for and you're st- going to buy it. I'm buying it. I oh, have it. But the thing is, of course he's buying it. <laughs> what kind of question is that? It's a platformer, which you don't see a lot of nowadays. Like most. I love of, pl- uh, so uh, it feels. I actually f- like platformers, Ben. It feels fresh picking it up because we were, we were so oversaturated with first person shooters and third person shooters when I pick I'm like what is this like Banjo-Kazooie like game Banjo- yeah, yeah. That's it's cool. good man I've seen the gameplay like I really want to play it so I'm probably gonna yeah you can borrow it off yeah, of me yeah, but, yeah. but like tough. um you have like your charge shot like your Mega Man charge shot you could do against the the, the bad guys Ooh. you're quick so you have like a double jump your speed boots nice. you have your little dog that's with you that he could try he could sub them out from other bots yeah and you you could tackle the map differently so you could uh, one bot helps you climb walls one bot attacks for you that's um cool. and it's also part of the windows 10 initiative so you buy it on xbox when you get it for windows 10 as well yeah and um, overall, I really enjoyed my time with Recore. I really did feel like it was f- it was a fresh new take. 
if and that it really did feel like Meg, the Mega Man team got behind it. I'm really nice. excited to get my hands on it. It's so cool how like all these new type of games are coming to Xbox One now. Like yeah, like before games, was, man. the future oh, of I'm Xbox One it, looks bright. It's Isn't looking it? good from playing. Like, from yeah, that's the name of this episode: <laughs> the future of Xbox One. <laughs> looking yeah. bright. But I mean, the, the exclusive I got to play like Recore sold me Forza is obviously amazing. Gears of War is no like is an automatic sale. Except yeah. for Titan for two of course oh screw that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good you don't have to spend money on it so you're saving money in a way no he's gonna s- <laughs> i want to get he's gonna good. buy it he's gonna buy it and just shed for it 30 tear. bucks of it and then he's gonna sell, sell it profit for but 50 bucks um, back to the company but uh there, there's uh, one game, the game i want to give a special shout out like a little talk about which now i don't think a lot of people really know about it, about yeah. it except for the people who, who like follow all the xbox yeah yeah, yeah go ahead Cuphead. Yeah, Cuphead. 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 What so is a cup for a head? Have what you is seen cuphead? anything about Cuphead? It's pretty cool. It, it looks, looks like the old... M- 1930 Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse cartoons. Mouse really? Cartoons. Like, okay. That's how they made the game. So, like, it's it's like black and white, faded c- c- color, and all that stuff from the old Mickey Mouse cartoon. And that's the gameplay. All if right, I put it on... Like, you're legit. If I put it on the PC and I... Didn't tell you it was Cuphead. You would think you're watching like a yeah like a old Mickey Mouse. That's how good the graphics. Yeah, man. How like true it's, to it's, the graphics it is. It's good. That's like nice. I, I, I like it. So, so um, Cuphead is an I I D at Xbox game, which is coming also to uh, Windows 10, and um, it is very reminiscent of those old Contra games. I don't know if you ever played Contra yeah. back in the day for Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. side scroller shooter, uh, with crazy boss fights that have like certain patterns that, uh, yeah. that you have to follow, like the old Mega Man games. But yep. To the people who try to tell me that Dark Souls is hard, if you can beat the first level of Cuphead, I will give you 50 bucks. That <laughs> This me, is a shout out to our friend. Uh, <sighs> me Alice. and Chris Emotionless. got to try out Cuphead. We couldn't make it past the f- first five minutes of the game. No, you have three. Really. You have three hits. Once you hit your three hits, you die. I don't know if they're going to implement checkpoints when the game finally gets out, but... That game is so brutally difficult. I get maybe I'm just not used to side scrollers yeah. like back in the day, but or it, maybe it was so. I thought like, hey, you know what? I'll pick this game up. Me and Alex will play a, a cute like couple game. Yeah, no way, no way. There's no <laughs> way Alex would, hard, eh? Alex would toss my controller across the room. <laughs> well, Sarosh, you know what Eric Eric needs to do? What does he need to do? He needs to get good. <laughs> That's what he needs to do. Uh, <laughs> get good, Eric. No, no, no. It's, it's just cool how the, they have all these like new type of games, like arcade games, and all these. Yeah, I mean, developing it, games that are coming out. It was, cool. it was, it was, it was a really great experience. It, the games I got to try, I liked all of them. Uh, we got more games coming down the pipeline later on. Um, yeah. I really want to try Sea of Thieves. Unfortunately, it wasn't there. And, oh, Sea of Thieves look good. Yeah, and I scale think bounds. like a lot of us will play it, and it'll be fun. That'd I think good. it would be fun to see if these, but I, cool. those are two games I wanted to try that I didn't really get to get to see. I also got to try Tekken Seven, which was good. Oh man, that game is that game is what I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I, know what I, happened? I beat Chris both times in Tekken Seven. Huh? I picked Akuma and I whooped Chris both times in Tekken Seven. Bro, play me. I'll whoop your ass. Probably. <laughs> so so uh like. Shout out we to were, Chris Ma, by the way. I don't think he we listens were, to this podcast. <laughs> we were screw you, uh, Chris Ma. We were uh, <laughs> at uh, at Slyman's on Friday, mm-hmm. and uh, I was uh, he, he's actually a big wrestling fan. So I was showing all the combos for King in the game mm-hmm. because the King is a wrestler in Tekken. Okay, and then he goes like, "Damn, what is this? <laughs> Let's buy the game right now!" And then we bought uh, Tekken Tag too? Tournament two. The game was free, you guys. No, it, it, it was, was only free f- for E3. For, for, uh, for a week. It was only free for you guys a week. guys should download it when I posted it on the group. I'm sorry, Eric. Yeah. We didn't, okay? So we, we bought it, and then we played that for, like, the longest time. We played that for, like, hours and hours. It was too fun. My game, man. That's my childhood. Too fun. Yeah. 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 Can't give too much of input on Tekken 7, because I don't know... I, didn't play too much of the other ones, but from what I played, I did enjoy. It. They felt a lot quicker really? compared to the other Tekken. Yeah, Dude, it's always and quick, I, man. and I just you need played to play the new ones. You should I, play me. I played Akuma like I played Akuma in Street Fighter. No way. And his combo was kind of stuck, and I was like, "All right, awesome." And it was yeah, it, it's almost the same. It's almost the same ones. It's pretty cool. I liked it, man. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like overall, the future for Xbox is looking good. 
I would compared say to so. PlayStation? Because PlayStation is coming out with some crazy stuff. Well, this year they got Last Guardian, Gran Turismo Sports, and yeah. a twenty dollar price hike for PlayStation Plus in Canada. Ooh. <laughs> the Last of Us Two is also hinted. Last of Us Two, yeah. Is it? It's oh, yeah. I'm- they Bring have it hinted on. it, so now it's it's actually somewhat confirmed. So everybody's so hyped now. Oh man, that, super not, hyped. Not, whatever Night Dog touches is gold. So you know, yeah, it's, there, it's in good hands. Agreed, agreed. But yeah, we're actually pretty close to time. But uh, I actually wanted to talk about esports because yesterday, yesterday, we had the first ever uh, North American League of Legends Championship at Toronto. And uh, you have the third place match, which was yesterday, and the finals, which which is happening right now. Okay, As the finals speak. was the whole Air Canada Center, which seats like how many people? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. It was sold out in uh, probably half an hour. So half just, an hour. So just people that don't know where Air Canada Center is, like though that's where the Toronto Raptors in the NBA or yeah. in the Toronto Maple Leafs. In the NHL, that's where they play. Yeah. So to have that stadium or that center like sold out a League of Legends esport event. Yeah. I saw huge. pictures on like people's Instagrams and Facebook. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what yeah, the heck? Yeah. So many people. Okay, so, uh, I went. To, I went to go to the finals, but uh, it was sold out. So I got the ticket for the th- third place match, and it was beyond amazing. Like just like like you just see like how. F- far esports has actually come like these guys are actually celebrities and they come out and people go crazy like they just start screaming Um, and just like chanting and all that stuff and every time someone would get a kill or an outplay or anything people would go insane like just get up on their seas just throwing things well in the air and then just just crazy like that crowd was amazing and just it was it was a whole new level of experience man like yeah i highly re- recommend that if they have something like this in the future as well uh something like uh i don't know a uh, counter strike or even overwatch something i highly recommend you guys go uh, and how watch much it. the tickets go for uh the third place message was for 35 bucks okay yeah, which wasn't expensive at yeah, all. It was no, not great. Right? Yeah. Compared to what uh, like, they usually go for for any other ticket. Yeah, yeah, but the finals was for fifty bucks. It's still not bad. Yeah, well, they're still pretty early, right? But yeah, to kind of receive like this sort of response from just the community. Yeah, from just the community, mm-hmm. it's insane. It's ridiculous, and we we were just watching. It's just like a, like. If you think about it, you're basically just watching a screen. You're not even watching like them play an actual game. It's just watching a screen, but uh, which is the same thing you can do at home as well on your giant TV or whatever you have at home. But then the thing is just watching it with a crowd and people who just who just passionately love this game. Well, I don't really love it that much though, but people who do, people just go crazy. Oh, for sure. I could be, I, Crazy, man. It key- was intense. It was so intense. Yeah, I'm saying, everything's always more fun when you watch it with the, with the community. Oh, community. yeah. Like, uh, the like how we watched... Yo, uh, man, Dragon Ball. Uh, Dragon Resurrection Ball, Resurrection F. F. Was In the, the theater, Yo, Siroshi, you missed that. Day. That was like the greatest movie experience ever. Man. You think <laughs> the Marvel fanboys could cheer on for people, man? You guys have no idea what happened oh in the Dragon Ball Z God. one. Every time somebody would trash talk in the movie, we would just oh, go up and like, ooh. <laughs> you laughed at I remember Frieza said something yeah. and all you hear from the back of the theater is like yo I won't talk shit Frieza like, you <laughs> yeah. won't get whooped and everybody started laughing <laughs> I was like oh shit <laughs> but no, oh yeah yeah when when uh, when Vegeta you went Super goes Saiyan goes like Blue? Super Saiyan 4 everybody goes off like people just went off that's the thing like you could watch it at home sure like that's like, the same idea for anything you watch in a the theater but like when you're watching with people that enjoy it as much as you it, exactly. it adds to the experience tenfold man yeah, it's definitely. crazy it's so crazy cause th- cause this is the time to be alive man this is the time because Everything that we thought was cool back when we were young is big, so big yeah. to a point where so many people agree with your uh, 
your, your like shows games and everything right yeah. so once you all get together and it's become so huge that the air canada center was sold out yeah sold out 20000 oh. seat in half an hour yeah t- if you to told see something so- like that that is That's oh my god cool. if you told someone that in like 19 like 99 or like the early 2000s everybody would that, be like are you crazy? Like, what the heck it's like that's, it, who would pay to watch that like yeah. that's kind of probably the response that you would have gotten and yeah. now it's kind of just like wow like yeah it Intense, is like man. all the things that people kind of got picked on being a kid like like superhero movies anime yeah. games kind of like oh you're a nerd like what the hell now it's like it's such like a social norm that yeah. it is so like nice to see everyone get around and like enjoy their hobbies together and exactly, get to man. you know it's just like it's a very like not pleasant thing to get to Agreed, experience man. it's good man what a time to be alive but uh yeah so, so just i just want to mention this really quickly like two weeks ago when we were talking about esports on our old podcast uh one of the commentators one of the comment one of the reasons i left the comment uh olive oil baron Mm-hmm. He basically told us to watch this uh, Rocket League championship that was happening that weekend. Oh, yeah, that was so good, man. And it dude, was so intense. he like when I when I saw the final uh when he he posted a link on our YouTube uh, yeah. comments and when you see that final it was intense. Dude, people got so hyped cuz like yeah, uh, so if you guys don't know, oh, right? Rocket League is the game where you play soccer but then with cars with cars yeah with really tiny cars i don't know if they're but are RC people cars driving or, those cars huh are people driving those cars or is someone inside the rocket league car now that is the fans that debate is a about that all the time or it's an rc car who knows is it an rc car or is it someone driving the car it's uh what came first man the chicken, <laughs> <laughs> the chicken or the egg <laughs> like what yo but uh, but like that competition was so intense like these guys train on this game to perfect everything teamwork shots everything like the way they were playing i don't think i can ever play because I just they're to, so good at it man i just want to quickly comment like how badass their names are the group names like <laughs> flipside tactics, flip tactics and like uh, that was one of the teams it's so ibp sick. cosmic or something like that ibp was, cosmic yeah there was really like this badass names like you just you don't want to like mess around with that group <laughs> yeah, you know what i mean <laughs> they're just like us though like they're just like normal guys still it's just a badass <laughs> and I seen graffiti about badass. that like on the like the walls of Toronto for side yeah. tactics or something just spray painting <laughs> like, no oh, way man what the heck yeah man <laughs> oh my god don't want to mess with those guys don't want to mess with these guys man but yeah like I, I was just so impressed like how they presented it like it, it, it felt like you were watching like a sporting event like they had commentators yeah. they had reporters interviewing It's People, always like that, man. Thing, and it was it was like a huge, huge budget. It yeah, was like man, they they crazy. just went all out. It is and it was, intense. It was so cool to see. And and the best thing about that was um, was every time a goal would happen or someone would help play or something, the crowd would go nuts. Yeah, so much hype, everything. And he uh, the the comment actually brought that up as well, like. Olive Oil Baron, right? He said that it r- reminded him of that uh, Igo versus w- uh, Wong, I think. Yeah, from Justin Wong. 2004. Street yeah, Fighter. It, yeah, Street Fighter. The, yeah. Uh, the the Ken versus Chun Li, right? He just he just like he had no health, and yeah, he zero health. Locks like a super from Chun Li yeah. and he blocks each and every set of like I don't know how many moves and then he just does his own super and kills her and wins the entire tournament right there the crowd goes wild everybody goes nuts like that's like one of the iconic moments man yeah. that's just that's basically so sick, like man. Michael Jordan hitting a game winning shot to end his career I don't know if he ended his career after that or not. What are you gonna say? It's like it's a bad thing. <laughs> well, I'm just saying it's like it's, it's that level. He's one of the richest guy now. Like I don't think he <laughs> that level of hype that he hit a game-winning shot near the end. Well, I think with the, cool. that Street Fighter one, no one thought the guy was gonna win. He had such tiny health left. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was like not even the tip. It was like so. It was. And dumb, he reversed man. it. Like he the guy dumb. almost had. The guy had a full bar of health. Uh, they both won one game. So whoever wins the next game wins was the championship. Win the, yeah, championship. And everyone was probably sitting back everything. thinking that guy was because he was getting whooped. The guy yeah. had full health. He only had a, like maybe a quarter, which got inched down to a tick because he was blocking all the specials. Yeah. And yeah. he ended up winning. Yeah, yeah, he 
he just he was so efficient and he did everything perfectly like yeah. if he screwed up even a second there he was done yeah but yeah oh my god man so good yeah that's the podcast right i just want to give a quick shout out to olive oil baron who's he's a good friend of mine oh he's, he's a really a- nice guy and he listens to like almost every week i think big shout out to you so, man yeah i love you thank you man we love you for One love. everything <laughs> yeah and i hope you're having a wonderful day yeah sarosh really man this is you man this is you it's true, please it's call them next week okay? <laughs> <laughs> write, write to my letters please <laughs> please reply. i haven't replied they haven't gotten i've sent back. you letters. a raven i sent <laughs> you a raven <laughs> at least bring back the raven <laughs> i need it <laughs> with a heart I yeah but yeah that is the podcast thank you for listening it was a long one woo, eric woo. was holding in all that gaming news for all that time but I'm do you feel good eric oh, do you man. feel good releasing all that rage all that Titanfall? stress I won't feel good till Titanfall 2 goes back to its glory <laughs> days. <laughs> Hopefully that's soon. Bro. Hopefully that's I'm going to post this on Vincent Pell as well. Tell him to fast forward it to like this perfect <laughs> time spot. You should tell him the time spot. And just, like, just listen to this. This is your hardcore fan talking about it, man. Just pay attention to what he's saying. <laughs> listen to me. He's like, he's like, all right, I'm going to li- listen to this after all these hundreds of other podcasts <laughs> I got to listen to yeah. about yeah. Titanfall 2. Yeah. But yeah, man. But yeah. are you ready? Yes. For yes. this week's questions from our listeners. Yes, you got some two comments on our YouTube channels. Very anonymous, baby. Very thankful for them tuning in and listening. Yeah, we love you guys. Our first comment is from Muhammad Salman, also known as Sly Man, though we like to call him. Yeah. And uh, he says, "Great episode, guys. Saroj's comment on Robin and Little White Boys was hilarious. <laughs> I have a question regarding all these new comic book movies, games, and TV shows coming out. Personally, I watch all these movies with a blank slate and try to be entertained with the content of this of that specific entity. But diehard fans thrive on continuity. So my question is." How do you keep these complex, intertwined worlds of comic books accessible to both new and existing audiences? Seems like there's so much homework to do with these movies. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> First of all, excellent question, Simon. Yeah. Yeah. Long excellent. question. <laughs> Long excellent question. question. How do you even tackle that question? <laughs> <laughs> well... Eric, I'm going to let you handle that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Such a long question. I'm pretty sure Sarosh got it under control. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 what do you guys think, though? Because uh, he has a pretty good question. Because his basic question was that, like, how do you bring in fans of comic books or a video game into and new fans as well when you make a movie about comic books or video games? How do you do that? What's the key ingredients to making the perfect film that will bring in new fans and existing fans? How do you guys think? Um, a good movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> if so, only it was that. Easy. Yeah. So honestly, uh, so this this is what I think. Uh, you need to have like an origin story that explains what's going on. You know what I mean? You yep. need to, but at the same time, like if you're watching Iron Man three. Yeah, and you haven't seen the first two Iron Mans. Yeah, why and your own fault? <laughs> well, that's yeah, like why? That's your own thing. Like, you should you should be watching the first two, okay, Iron Man movies uh, to watch uh, Iron Man three. How about like a brand new movie like Deadpool. Wonder Woman? Is coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Deadpool is a very good example as well because that movie brought on existing fans and new fans as well, like yeah. people who don't even know about. Deadpool at all like uh, like Alex right she hasn't seen or heard or even like read any comics about it but she enjoyed it too if she loved it, it that's like her favorite superhero movie yeah <laughs> so it, it's it's great because it had all the elements of making a movie that is you know enjoyable f- for both uh, new audience and an existing one yeah but uh but then Deadpool was also an origin story right yeah so it did it was, a good yeah. job Dealing really with job, telling yeah. that origin, but let's say if people are watching Deadpool two or in the future Deadpool three, yeah, like you should be watching the first two Deadpool movies. Yeah, to, I agree. But I think his question mostly like relates to the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think it mostly relates to Suicide Squad <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> that's the recent one, and that's, it's that's more true. about like because we don't know anything about anybody. That's true. The only thing we know vaguely about is the Joker and 
Harley Quinn. You know, you know what? That yeah. could be one of the reasons why that movie wasn't that that great because none of them had origin stories. Basically, they all yeah. rushed it in. You know, mm-hmm. we we already had Joker, like in that world. We already we already had Batman in that world. Yeah. So we don't sympathize like with those characters at all. We don't know anything about them. Their whole backstory, and uh, maybe that's why it's important to have all these like origin stories and all these mm. you know previous movies so for them to agree like continue and right that's but why then avengers at the same was time uh i don't think anybody wants to see like each origin story for each bad guy right but, but like i guess the way they made it was weird well what do you think eric um see i think for if you want when it comes to video game movies and it comes to comic book movies i think one of the main important factors is sticking to the source material because yeah. mm-hmm. nothing is going to piss off the you the hardcore fans that came to see it more than deviating so much from the source material that all it is is just a name slapped onto a movie Agreed. a perfect example is even though they're old movies is the Resident Evil movies oh yeah. they perfect devi- example they deviate example. so much from the source material that you have no idea why it's even called it Resident Evil it's kind of <laughs> like he just took the movie and he just put his own spin on it and he's like you know what like I want people to come and watch it so bam throw resident evil onto it <laughs> so like that's a, that, that, like that's the thing like e- like uh, when you, you, you the thing about like for example deadpool is it followed its source material very well and it was just an interesting superhero to make a movie on since he's an anti-hero one thing that i find is with the people who've seen these movies so many times is th- they kind of get fatigued from yeah. seeing the same you know plots recycled Agreed. over and over again yeah so Agreed, man you i feel like you got to stick with the source but and on top of that like try to deviate if you are going to deviate uh, deviate enough to that it's not just your generic superhero plot like you know it, that's just the way i see it yeah i agree see that's why like marvel does such a good job at these movies is when they want to <laughs> what do you, why are you laughing man? I'm what? laughing because I'm laughing because almost every podcast Sharos has a moment where he says you Mar- know that's, that's why, why Marvel, Marvel is- does a really good job <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's like probably the fifth sixth time I've heard that I think I just said it like the fourth time today alone yo they should sponsor you you talk about them so much I know biggest well, Xbox yeah, fanboy should... biggest Marvel fanboy yeah, there, <laughs> there you go but uh what was that what, what I was gonna say was they do a really good job on how like to introduce these characters, you know what I mean? Like Ant-Man that no one really cares that much about. They, they introduced him in like a way, you know, like, oh, let's make Ant-Man like a, like a heist movie. Like a comedic yeah. heist movie that people will get entertained with. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it worked, you know? And then, okay, we're going we're gonna to tell a new Captain America story. Like I'm yeah. talking about the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Let's have like a spy thriller. It was a very good deal. Because I did not like the first Captain America. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was boring so boring but cheesy. the second third one's so good like i don't yeah. know how they just brought it back but it was really really good yeah on top of that what i believe what makes a really good superhero movie or video game uh that will bring in an old uh, audience as well as new one is if they don't m- over complicate things they don't need to bring like 100 things into the thing just like have one storyline the characters and have a simple plot going that's what Deadpool had what was the plot for Deadpool the guy had it's cancer a revenge revenge story yeah. yeah guy had cancer he got superpowers he but wants to save his girl yeah he saves his girl such a simple plot there's nothing to throw but they filled it in with jokes yeah that's it and then just pacing the movie really well with the flashbacks to the current story and it was good same applies for Civil War Civil War had so many people in it but then it was entertaining to watch I mean some people did not like it but then uh, it was overall a very good movie it was probably the superhero movie of the year then right yeah and then at the same time like so many people in it and then uh you have like each character getting introduced properly and then just pacing it and then each action scene and then you know a whole plot happening it was you have to keep it simple like the more you add into it the more you confuse 
your mm, you fans and the less you keep into it the more you kind of disappoint your like existing fans so you have to meet in them right in them center where the story the plot and the characters aren't too much and too little it's right in the middle throw easter eggs in there and then all that stuff so yeah like yeah give the audience something to think about and then just you know absorb the movie i think that's what yeah. i think so basically just keeping the plot simple is to make it more accessible to all yeah. these new movies going on forward and don't overcomplicate things yeah i hope that answers your question sly man yeah uh another comment we got was from a phone call <laughs> from <laughs> sarosha <laughs> it was from Yeah, so another comment we got was from uh, Arbitrage 10K. Damn. And he says, "Great show. What I found in- interesting is the discussion on how the new generation of superheroes are becoming racially diverse. The name of the name of phone call. <laughs> <laughs> the names Tony Stark, Peter Parker, Mary Jane are iconic and everyone identifies the superheroes based on their names too." Once the et- ethnicities start changing, the name also have to change to make it more more relevant. To me, I would feel that part of the history is lost when that happens. Mm. Okay. I mean, uh his uh his question is basically talking about just uh how how like these iconic heroes and everything like oh, like the oh, new oh, Iron, oh, Iron Man no, Iron Woman yeah kind of thing and uh the you female thor and all that huh? yeah because c- like if someone says hey look it's iron man what's the first thing that comes to your head Stark. exactly so like if they're changing to much of it well uh, uh, what do you think like I, is it i think the new one's called i think her name's called like iron heart or something iron heart yeah, yeah the yeah, the, yeah. So the, the, the female one is called iron heart i believe so is she rude it. or something huh Is she rude or something because she has an iron heart? I don't know. I think, <laughs> but um, I find that when you're changing around characters, you are always going to upset a certain group of people. Agreed. Um, it's I find that it's not that they're exactly getting rid of Tony Stark. He's kind of playing background to the new Age of Avengers and the new superheroes. And I feel yeah. the ethnicity or the sex of the hero doesn't identify who the hero is it's yeah. more of what they do and what they're capable of or like their personality traits so it's not like they're deleting peter parker out of the history of marvel or they're deleting like these are iconic characters they're legacy characters i would say yeah. that um you will always have i feel like marvel is trying to diversify or even dc they're trying to diversify their cast because back when these comics were written these comics were all written in the early what like 1900s yeah agreed. and 1900s know, like 19 yeah i was back like really superman was like 19 uh like 30s 1930s yeah. no way. 19 oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay right but okay, okay, okay. you could only yeah, imagine all the crazy. social stuff going on back then so when they're writing their characters it's just like all right everyone's white everyone's a guy done yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right? a, that's a very yeah. good point that's a very good point so but now that i'm saying like in this day and age It's okay to have like a like a new Iron Man that's that's like a black yeah, woman, right? Yeah, but like if you think about it, they're like I mean the new uh, Iron Man as I said like last week as well. It's like they're pushing every socially acceptable thing on this person as possible. Okay, but like he's young and then African American and a girl. Okay? okay that's but- and it's great. I'm going to read it but sometimes it's like okay you don't need to try this hard even if you put up like just someone who's african american that's fine it's always way too much as well so this is the thing right so like uh like i guess like if you get like a new mary jane that's a new new like that's like like a new race that's mary jane or whatever, a new uh let's say like tony stark that's like a like a new black antonia stark or whatever you know like a black girl or whatever but that's not the case this is uh this new character is, is her name is riri riri williams and she's okay. like a young prodigy and like mit or something okay and then, okay, okay so it's like a whole new story of whole new oh, it's a completely story, right? new it's like okay. a new, so i think that's fine like that's okay 
Yeah, but you like need, and being for that to for for superheroes to pass on their mantles, it's been yeah. doing it's been done like over and over again. Yeah. So why is this bothering people just because it's like a young black woman? What, but did they what recast I mean? Mary Jane in the new uh, Spider-Man movie? Yeah. Yes, yes. So we talked about that. That was the thing. Earlier. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So the new Mary Jane is Zendaya, who's like a yeah. African American uh, girl. Yeah. And basically, what we said was like. Like I don't mind of that casting as long as she has red hair, because <laughs> <laughs> red hair is like the iconic Mary yeah. look. So so uh, 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 I feel like like this girl, uh, a new Tony Stark, right? Well, the new Iron Man, right? The cool thing to see in the comics would be is to just keep those I- iconic parts of what makes Tony Stark Tony Stark. If she has a similar personality, because she is a prodigy, so she's probably going to be like, uh, like rude and just like just say whatever comes to her mind. That is what will make her like a smart ass and like something who would be really fun to read. So if they're carrying out the legacy through the personality, I think that'd be good. Yeah, I thought that or just was super intelligent, right? That's what Tony Stark was eventually is. Yeah, but so is to make uh, a so is Bruce Banner, right? Yeah, but they both can be intelligent. <laughs> like, well, I don't like what you, I don't know what you're trying. Like to one intelligent person. I'm trying to say that like uh, <laughs> Tony like, Stark is he's passing on the torch. Too. Like he's like a condescending guy, Tony. Stark. Yeah, yeah. You so know? like, like, he's like, like sarca- sarcastic. his personality. If that personality is like transferred on to his, you know, his like project, uh, that is that's right. yeah, his protege. So like, like that would be cool to see that. Okay, fine. You know what? I'm getting a new Iron Man, but this person's kind of it's completely different. But they still have the elements to be like Iron Man, like just thinking for themselves and just like. Even if, you know, everyone thinks you're wrong, I'm still going to do this. So it's pretty cool, even though that's wrong, because in Civil War, he did the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is a pretty big, uh, pretty, pretty big and deep discussion. Top. Yeah, discussion. So yeah, overall. thank you for your topic. <laughs> thank yeah, thank you for the for comment. comment. Arbitrage 10K. Pretty cool. Yeah. We'll try to bring up uh, more in the future when we see more things about the comic. But let's see. That is the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to leave us a comment or want us to talk about absolutely anything, even, you know, absolutely anything like, you know, how how to hit on curls or something, and we'll what, try our best to answer. And what came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, it's, science I think it's like, uh, <laughs> I think scientifically proven, I think it was a chicken. I think. Or was it the egg? I think it was the chicken. <laughs> it was a chicken, yeah. So, ha. Huh. <laughs> We'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for listening. Uh, Just follow us on Twitter, guys. You know, at, <laughs> at Transcendence. You can also hear our podcast <laughs> on <laughs> iTunes. Okay, I better say it again. Okay, well, I was going to say it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought you were ending okay. it. I thought you were ending it. All right, guys. Th- thank you so much for listening. This has been the Transcendence podcast where we talk about video games, movies, TV shows, random topics of our own, as well as your lovely comments. So please leave us comments to talk about on our YouTube videos, as well as our Twitter, which is hash, uh, which is twitter.com slash Transcendence, T-R-I-S-C-E-N-D-E-N-C-E. Our podcasts are available on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, as well as YouTube. So Ooh. please check it out and hit that subscribe or follow if you're into all this stuff. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Take care, guys. See ya. Podcasts up every Mondays. Later, guys. We love you. <laughs>